Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Torla. AC is broken in my house. I've packed up everything, so I will not have face cam for quite a while. Uh, still looking for a place to live. Hopefully, can get out of here relatively soon and get reset up, so we're good to go. But that's enough about me. Let's talk about what 2K Games was saying this week. I'm sure you've heard the news that next gen games are going to be $10 more because 2K is not making enough money. Or whatever fallacy they're trying to spin to up the price of these games. I honestly think that the idea of games being more expensive because companies that are losing money or development costs are too much is clearly blatantly false. And a quick Google search and a couple fact checks later, you can see how many copies these games sell. But what you can't see is how much money they make off the microtransactions. Now, I'm going to preface everything I'm going to say by saying I am not a player of sports games at all. NBA 2K, Madden, any of them. I don't play any of them. But I still think this is a dangerous precedent and an absolute crazy precedent to set. I'm just going to read this first quote here from the Eurogamer article written by Tom Phillips on the matter. We believe our suggested retail price of for NBA 2K21 on next-gen platforms fairly represents the value of what's being offered. Power, speed, technology, it's only possible on new hardware. Would you really spend $10 more on the same version of a game for a platform you might not even be able to afford because we still don't know the price of either of these consoles when the game's available on last gen and will play on your new console? This quote kind of baffles me. The notion that just because something's more powerful, it's faster, it's got better technology, we need to pay more, and that's a good value? We're talking about a piece of software here. A piece of software that'll remind you that the prior version had a bloody roulette wheel in it, and a pachinko machine. I don't care what you dress it up as or what you call it, those are still gambling machines on a game that's rated E for everyone. But that is another notion entirely. Xbox Game Pass is a good value. Humble Bundle is a good value. NBA 2K21 I don't think is a good value. I don't think spending $10 more for a next-gen experience is worth it in my mind. But we are confident that NBA 2K21 will be a monumental leap forward for the franchise. A standout visual showcase for next generation consoles. We recognize that it's our responsibility to prove the value to our fans and NBA 2K players. This quote hits the nail on the head here. Yeah, it's your job to explain why this is a good value. And you haven't done that. You haven't explained anything, you just said that it's going to be a standout visual showcase on next generation consoles. My takeaway from this quote is, and reading between the lines just a little bit, they obviously think we're stupid. They obviously think we can't just Google and see the billion dollars they made last year. They want to make another billion this year. The article refers to another article on GameIndustry.biz talking with one Yoshio Osaki. Even with the price increase to $69.99 for next gen, the price increase from 2005 to 2020 next gen is only up 17%, far lower than others in comparison. There's a bit more article and then, while the cost of development and publishing have gone up, the pricing in other entertainment verticals have gone up substantially. Next-gen software pricing has not reflected these increases. $59.99 to $69.99 doesn't even cover the cost increase completely, but it does move to the proper direction. Now, I want to preface this in saying that I'm not saying that Yoshio Osaki has nothing of merit to say here, that everything he said here is blatantly false, but we need to discuss the elephant in the room. If this business model wasn't profitable, Companies would have changed it a long time ago. 
There was a move towards extra content, DLC, and then they started cutting out pieces of the game like cosmetics and selling them back to us. Horse armor will never die. I want to point out that these business practices also started after the price increase to $59.99. But what also started after that price increase was smaller scale indie games. A trend that's continued and got to the point where even big companies are now making smaller scale games. But 2K wants to say that they're owed this extra money, that they're allowed to charge more because it's a visual showcase. I'd argue a game like Bright Memory is a visual showcase. I could argue that a game like Lost in Random is a visual showcase. But these are smaller developed games from smaller studios. Even EA has a game coming out that's not full price in October. Star Wars Squadrons. It's $54.99 here in Canada. And that's not developed by an indie studio, that's one of their in-house ones. But I digress. Of all the games to come out and say they need $10 more for this visual showcase because this game is so fantastic and so amazing. For that game to be NBA 2K21 is a bit surreal. I already thought sports games were overpriced, especially with the added cost of loot boxes and other gambling mechanics. This is the trend from last gen I thought was dead. If you recall, Call of Duty Ghosts had a PS4 Xbox One upgrade program where you could spend $10 to get the next gen version if you had a disc for the Xbox 360 or PS3. This time, Microsoft's come to the table with a new strategy that they call Smart Delivery, where you buy a game once and if the developer enables it, you get access to the best version your console can play. So then your old Xbox doesn't become e-waste. You can still use it, move it to another bedroom, and if your significant other, mother, or whatever wants to use the TV where your good console is, you can go into another room and play there. But Microsoft isn't the only one. Apparently EA's dual entitlement is also a project that exists for apparently Madden 21 and FIFA 21. You'll be able to get the next-gen version up until the release of Madden 22 and FIFA 22. And EA has been called one of the most evil companies in video gaming, so... I'd like to implore my audience and anyone who clicked on this video to not purchase games that decide that they're worth $10 more. Because if you pay that extra $10, if you give them that money and enough people give them that money, they will keep requesting it and the whole industry will be like that. What this actually is, is a market test. This is trying to see if the market can withstand prices to go up $10. This has nothing to do with the cost of next-gen consoles, anything else. This has everything to do with someone who's very greedy trying to get more money out of our pockets. But I think that's going to do it for me in this video. I want to reiterate that I don't condone this kind of behavior from big publishers in the gaming industry. I think if anyone deserves to be able to charge more money for their games, it's indie developers. Come back next week for my thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield, Isle of Armor, and some more technical stuff, because videos gotta get done. Anyway, until next time, sign off.